Welcome to Enter the Unknown, your one-stop shop for answers to questions that you were never bored enough to ask. My name is FJ, and after trying to sort this out for months, it's finally time. We're here today to ask the question, can you beat Pokemon X using the exact team that Ash used for every major battle? This video has almost certainly cost more to make than it will recoup, but I love making this series, so let's give it a go. I wound up just recording the 3DS from my phone because the options for setting it up for capture are expensive and limited. Anyway, in this series, we go through Pokemon games mimicking Ash's team wherever possible. We select the same teams that Ash used and we keep their movesets as anime accurate as we can. As always, there are no items allowed in battle and the battle style will be on set. I think that's everything that needs covering for now, so let's get started. Okay, to keep things as unnecessary as possible, I'll be splitting this video up into separate episodes, so here goes. Episode 1, The Phone to Menace. Ash Ketchum's Kalos journey begins as he flies into Lumio City with only Pikachu at his side. Now, I began recording this series on my new phone, which was a pretty massive mistake. Unfortunately, I saved before watching through the footage, so let's just start with some ugly screenshots. As always, crossing the border into a new region has caused Pikachu's level to reset to 5. Also, he got Pokeross. That just sort of happened. On top of that, he's forgotten a few moves, but they'll come in time. Except for Iron Tail, that's not really possible in X and Y. Before leaving Lumios, Ash adds his first new team member in the shape of Froakie. After hatching, the Gen 6 water starter began training itself and in Ash it's finally found a trainer it can trust. Froakie had already gone through several trainers before settling on our protagonist, so let's see what we're working with here. Froakie already knows Water Pulse when Ash meets him, so we've got him at level 14, which is when he learns it. Bubble and Pound are also present, but you can ignore Quick Attack. Ash does eventually attempt to teach Froakie Quick Attack, but it doesn't work out, so we aren't allowed to use it at all. Also, you've probably noticed the obvious lack of gummy frubbles in his moveset, so here's a reminder in case you need it. Of course, Froakie's gummy frubbles isn't a move. Alright, before getting into a battle, we've got another new team member to check out. Before reaching Santaloon, Ash encounters a Fletchling who he battles with Froakie, ultimately leading to a catch. If we went purely off of moveset for leveling, then Fletchling would have to be like level 50 by the first gym. Instead, I'm going to have to assume it was a well-bred Fletchling who already knew Peck, Razor Wind, and Steel Wing. Now, you may see Flame Charge there, it's not actually available to us yet, but for everything to work out, we needed it bred onto Fletchling. Alright, that's all of the setup out of the way, so let's move on to the first gym battle with Viola. Against the Sansaloon City gym leader, Ash chooses the duo of Pikachu and Fletchling. Now, sadly, we're still pre-terrible save, so we're going to go through this one very quickly. The recordings improve after this, I swear. Our face-off with Viola did play out very similarly to the anime version. Although Fletchling falls without making a big impact, Pikachu is there to pick up the slack. Ash's primary partner is on hand to take down Viola, Surskit, and Vivian with his electric-type attacks. That's good for the bug badge, so now we can move on to the slightly more viewable footage. Episode 2, Attack of the Bones There's not a lot going on for Ash between the Santaloon and Salage City gym battles, so we can just jump straight into his face-off with Grant. For this one, the entire trio gets to join in on the fun. Froakie, Fletchling, and Pikachu can all have a shot at Tyrant. Grant's team is at level 25 across the board, so that's what we're going for too. Other than Pikachu remembering how to use Quick Attack and Electro Ball, there's no move set updates to speak of, so let's get into it. The Rock Climbing Aficionado leads off with Zamora, so we start things with Fletchling. As Ash caught a well-bred Flying type, we can start off with a quad effective Steel Wing. The Fossil Pokemon falls in one because... Wow, Rock Ice is just a horrible dual typing. Grant sends out Tyrant next, and although a speedy Steel Wing still deals super effective damage, it isn't enough. Rock Tomb crushes Fletchling, knocking him out, but he's done a great job. Froakie's up next on our side, and again, speed allows us to move first. Water Pulse takes the Dino into red health, but a critical hit hands Grant another one shot. Pikachu is up last, but before his Thunderbolt can land, the Salage City Gym Leader breaks out a Hyper Potion. Second Gym, we're already into the Hyper Potions. Okay. A couple of not very effective electric blasts take Tyrant below half health once more as Pikachu effortlessly dodges a rock tomb. Another Thunderbolt lands as Pikachu dances his way around more crashing stones, frustrating Tyrant even more. One final Thunderbolt hands us the win with Pikachu at full health. It seems pretty faithful to the show that we're being incredibly reliant on Pikachu thus far. Anyway, that's the cliff badge earned, so let's get going. Episode 3, Fighting, starring Channing Tatum. After leaving Salage City, Ash comes across Holucha, the champion of the forest. Having resolved a problem in said forest, Ash battles Holucha with Froakie, the condition being that if Ash wins, Holucha will join his team. The battle ends in a double knockout with Flying Press and Pound simultaneously causing KOs. 
Despite not losing the battle, Holucha decides to join Ash on his journey, so that's team member number four. Now, when Ash catches Holucha, it knows three moves, Karate Chop, Flying Press, and High Jump Kick. It doesn't learn High Jump Kick until level 44, so again, I'm assuming this is a Pokemon that was well-bred. Ash is getting really lucky with wild Pokemon. Holucha learns Flying Press at 28, so having him around there seems about right for starters. Not long after adding Holucha, Ash gets into a Sky Battle, which pushes Fletchling to its limit. Determined to get over the line and pick up the win for Ash, Fletchling evolves into Fletchinder to improve its chances in battle. The only real change for us is that now we're allowed to use Flame Charge. Our next stop after the evolution is to visit the Shalor City Gym for a face-off with Karina. For the second time in three gym battles, it's Froakie who's left out. For the 3-on-3 matchup, Ash chooses to use Holucha, Fletchinder, and Pikachu. We just naturally match the levels exactly, so that works out because with the moves known, it's tough to make an accurate prediction of where we should be at level-wise. Alright, let's see how this goes. As always, we start out with Fletchinder as Karina calls for Mianfu. Fake out lands causing Fletchinder to flinch, but Flame Body burns the fighting type. A critical hit on Peck leaves Mianfu in red health, and weakened from the burn, her power-up punch isn't really powered up at all. The burn chips away the last bit of Mianfu's HP, and just like that, we're in the lead. Karina sends in her Machoke next, and Fletchinder strikes with Peck, but a quad effective Rock Tomb spells the end for the bird. We call on Holucha next, and Flying Press restores our advantage, leaving Karina with only one. She sends in her own Holucha, whose speed allows her to use Home Claws before we call for Flying Press. That begins a back and forth where the two just hit Flying Press after Flying Press until one wins out. Did you ever play a fighting game as a kid and once you figure out how to do that one move, you just like, stick with that? That's essentially what we're going for here. Thanks to a Hyper Potion from Karina, her whole Ucha wins out, so for the third consecutive gym battle, we're into a one-on-one. -on -one. Pikachu comes in as my tripod slips further and Karina calls for Flying Press once more. Holucha lands hard on the electric mouse, but the resistance allows him to just about survive. The countering Thunderbolt connects, taking Holucha down to leave Pikachu as the sole survivor for the third consecutive gym battle. I have got this Ash Ketchum thing down. The Rumble Badge takes us to three, so let's carry on. Episode four, a new joke. In a battle against the Barbarical, Ash's Froakie evolves into Frogadier, massively increasing the gumminess of his Frubbles. When he evolves, Frogadier adds Aerial Ace, so we're halfway to a final moveset. Cut and Aerial Ace will be sticking around, but something more interesting happened while grinding up Froakie. In the final battle needed to level him up, I ran into a shiny Mr. Mime. That's my first random shiny in a long, long time, but also I wasn't battling too many wild Pokemon in this challenge, so this was just incredibly unlikely. Anyway, that's not the important catch that we need to focus on. On Route 12 outside of Shalor City, Ash encounters a Gumi who gets caught up in one of Team Rocket's schemes. After fighting them off, Ash offers the Dragon a place on his team. Gumi's excited to join, but for now, I don't think he'll be too useful. At this point, Gumi only knows Rain Dance and Bide. You may see Dragon Breath there, but that's for later use only. For now, the Wingless Dragon will be extremely tough to use. We don't need to worry about that yet, though. After evolving Froki and catching Gumi, Ash heads onwards to Kumarine City to take on Ramos. Needing another trio for the Grass-type gym, Ash leaves out Pikachu for the first time. On this occasion, we'll be using Fletchinder, Holucha, and Frogadier. Bringing a Water-type in for a battle with Ramos doesn't make much sense, but at least we've got Aerial Ace now. Let's see how this works out. For the first time, we start off with a Pokemon other than Fletchling, leading with Frogadier against Ramos's Jump Bluff. A powerful Acrobatics attack lands first, which badly injures Frogadier. Countering with Aerial Ace will be his only action, though. A second Acrobatics from Jump Bluff knocks out Frogadier, very quickly taking us down to two. We call on Fletchinder next, but once again, Jump Bluff strikes first. Did everyone else know that Jump Bluff's base speed stat is 110? The speed boost from Flame Charge turns the tables on Jump Bluff though, so even though Ramos uses a high proportion, Fletchinder is able to level up the match. The Kumarine City Gym Leader calls on his Go Goat second, and after a Flame Charge, Takedown almost knocks out Fletchinder. Another Flame Charge takes Go Goat into red health as the Fire Bear dodges a Takedown. Ramos then breaks out another high proportion to keep Go Goat in the battle. After a couple more blasts of Flame Charge, Takedown lands to leave us in a one on two. We call on Holucha last, whose flying press quickly brings us into a fourth consecutive gym one-on-one. -on -one. Weeping Bell's out last for the gym leader, but a powerful flying press ends things almost immediately. A critical hit finishes off Weeping Bell and Ramos to bring our badge case to halfway full. With the plant badge in hand, it's time to get going. On his way back to Lumio City, Ash protects his Gumi from a Grumpig, and seeing this, his evolution begins. After evolving into Sligu, Dragon Breath is actually a usable move now, so that's nice. We really don't get to use the dragon in its second stage for long though. 
Only a handful of episodes after becoming a Sligu, the rain causes another evolution. As a Gudra, we've now also got access to Dragon Pulse, so all of a sudden we've got a very strong Pokemon on hand. With those evolutions complete, Ash returns to Lumio City for his battle with Clement. It's another 3 on 3 and interested in switching things up, Frogadier and Fletchinder are on the bench for this one. Instead we'll be using Pikachu, Gudra and Horlucha. This one shouldn't be too hard. There's no way to get a Gudra who's lower than level 50, so our dragon is a little bit overpowered for Clement. So let's see how he fares. The battle begins with Clement Samolga facing off against our Gudra. A single Dragon Pulse decimates the Electric Squirrel, but Clement wisely calls on his Magneton second. Its resistance to Dragon means no one shot this time around, but Electric Terrain seems like a bit of a wasted move. A second Dragon Pulse leaves us in a 3 on 1, so I'm not liking Clement's chances. Heliolisk comes in and also survives through Dragon Pulse, but a not very effective Thunderbolt isn't going to turn the tide here. Clement uses a Hyper Potion, but he's really just delaying the inevitable. Another Dragon Pulse is met by another Hyper Potion, which honestly just seems cruel to Heliolisk. After another blast of energy from Gudra, Heliolisk lands a quick attack before one final Dragon Pulse hands us the win. Yep, that went about as well as I was imagining. After adding the Voltage Badge to his case, Ash is clearly unhappy with how easy things went. A gym battle not ending in a one-on-one -on -one is frankly unheard of, so he decides to up the difficulty level. In the wetlands separating the cities of Lumios and Laver, Gudra is forced to defend his homeland. Before they leave, Ash tells the dragon to remain behind with its friends. There's lots of hugging and crying from all involved, but eventually they part ways. Ash, Pikachu, Serena, Bonnie, Clement, and even Dedenne wave goodbye to Gudra and then continue on to Laver. Valerie's in charge of the gym there, and she's the first fairy-type gym leader that we've come across. In the anime, this is only a 2-on-2, two -two, but it's another 3-on-3 three -three in game, so we're at a disadvantage. Ash picks Fletchinder and Horlucha to make up his team's take on Valerie, so let's see what they can do. We start things off with Mawile vs Holucha, and a high jump kick blows away the best Pokemon in existence. Mr. Mime's up next for Valerie, and that gives us a chance to use our newest move, X Scissor. Light Screen doesn't do much to slow us down as Holucha strikes again with the bug type attack. That knockout gives us the advantage, leaving Valerie with only her Sylveon. The Fairy type Eeveelution resists all of Holucha's attacks, so there's not a lot he can do here. Even still, he manages to land a Flying Press and a High Jump Kick before he's absolutely obliterated by Dazzling Gleam. Releasing Gudra seems to have done the trick. After the changeup in Lumio City, we're back into a classic one-on-one -on -one gym situation. Unlike Holucha, Fletchinder actually has a super effective move to use. Steelwing isn't good for a KO though, so it's met by a charm before Valerie uses a Hyper Potion. The Kalos gym leaders really love those. Charm has massively weakened Fletchinder's Steelwing, so two strikes can't even take Sylveon down below half health. A Swift makes its mark on Fletchinder, who keeps going with Steelwing. After another Swift, we call for Flame Charge to hopefully avoid a Hyper Potion. When a third Swift takes Fletchinder down to just 6 HP though, we're basically at the point where anything but a critical hit means we'll lose. So in true anime style, our battered and bruised Fletchinder strikes with a Crit Steel Wing which finishes off Sylveon. Valerie is defeated, so we can add the very creatively named Fairy Badge to our case, taking our total to 6. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. Episode 5, The Eggpire Likes Bat. On the road to Dendemil Town, Holucha finds a Pokemon egg while training. When the fighting type brings the egg back to Ash, he realizes that it's about to hatch. Ash and all of the Pokemon gather around the egg with Fletchinder's flame body providing the majority of the warmth. That causes the egg to hatch, revealing Noibat. I'm gonna be honest guys, this may seem weird, but our Noibat happened to hatch at level 45. That or I really didn't want to level up Noibat around 40 times without having to use him. Anyway, we've only got Tackle and Supersonic available to us for now because Acrobatics is for later. After adding a fifth team member for the second time, we've got another evolution in front of us. To protect everyone from Moltres, Fletchinder evolves into Talonflame, blocking the legendary bird's flamethrower. Upon evolving, the Fireflying type learns Brave Bird, which does actually clue us in on its level. Talonflame learns Brave Bird at level 64, but as it also learns it at level 1, we're just going to go for the move relearner. Alright, that's everything that needs covering before Ash's battle with Olympia. Having made it to Anastar City, there's a double battle awaiting Ash. In the game, it's a regular 3 on 3, so we're at a disadvantage once more. Pikachu is on the sidelines once again, as we'll be using Talonflame and Frogadier for this one. That's a little bit inconvenient. If we had Greninja's partial dark typing, we might be okay, but this isn't a great setup for the Psychic Gym. Let's see how it goes. Olympia leads off with her Sigilyph, and we throw things back by starting with Talonflame. We call for Flame Charge to start, but after the fiery crash, Olympia calls for Reflect. That's really not good for us. Luckily, Talonflame's Brave Bird lands a critical hit to break through the power of Reflect and scores the first knockout of the match. 
Slow King's up next and knowing she's got the quad effective power gem in her moveset, we switch out to Frogadier. After being hit by the rock type move, we call for Dull Team because this may take a while. Olympia then instructs her Slow King to use Calm Mind, which is a little bit terrifying. Another double team is countered by Psychic, but with the up to evasion, Slow King can't connect. Now that Reflect is worn off, we call for Aerial Ace, which Frogadier lands, but it doesn't do too much. Another Calm Mind is even more worrying, but thankfully after a second Aerial Ace, Slow King fails with Psychic once more. Frogadier's third Aerial Ace is a critical hit, which takes Slow King below half health before Psychic finally makes contact, easily scoring the knockout. Frogadier has done exactly what we needed, though. When Talonflame returns to battle, Slow King's HP is low enough that one hit of Brave Bird is enough to knock her out. That leaves Olympia with only her Meow Stick, but the recoil from a couple of Brave Birds has us at a disadvantage. Fake Out makes things even tougher for us, but after a Brave Bird badly injures Meow Stick, Olympia calls for Calm Mind. That's seriously weird timing because one attack may have been enough. Instead, Talonflame's able to freely attack with Brave Bird, handing us another unlikely win. Some real close calls on this journey so far. Very fitting for an Ash video. Having earned the Psychic Badge, wow, Creative Juices were really flowing for the badge names in Kalos. Anyway, we can head onwards to Snowbell. After leaving Anastar City, Frogadier evolves into Greninja in a battle with Bisharp. Unfortunately, this means no more Gummy Frubbles. It's a tragedy that I won't get over anytime soon, but we're just gonna have to learn to live with it. Now that the Water Starter is fully evolved, we've got his final moveset. Water Shuriken, Aerial Ace, Double Team, and Cut aren't exactly the best moves, but that's what Ash's Greninja knows, so that's what we've got. A little further down the road to Snowbell, Ash comes across an angry Zapdos and tries to distract it with Talonflame and Holucha. When Zapdos knocks Holucha out of the sky, Noibat flaps into the air in an attempt to save its friend. Determined to catch the falling Holucha, Noibat evolves into Noivern, speeding up to rescue the Lucha bird thing. After evolving, Noivern learns Boom Burst, so we've now got another powerful dragon type. That's the last major event before Ash reaches Snowbell City, so let's move on to the Wolfric battle. We're back into a 3 on 3 in the anime, which means things will be leveled up in game again. Ash chooses to use Pikachu, Talonflame, and Greninja against Wolfric, which is a pretty strong trio. Alright, we've made it to the final Kalos Gym, so let's get into it. Wolfric leads off with his Obama Snow, and we start things out with Talonflame. We're gonna skip through the first minute where Wolfric used two Hyper Potions and get right to Talonflame's third Flame Charge. Thanks to Obama Snow needing time to recover, Talonflame is able to strike with a fourth flame charge, earning us the first win of the match. Wolfric sends out his Cryogonal second, and thanks to a pretty pathetic defense stat, Talonflame has no issues. Flame charge one shots the ice type to leave us in a 3 on 1. Avalug's up last for the Snowbell gym leader, and now we've got the opposite problem. A base defense stat of 184 makes even super effective physical attacks almost useless. Flame charge proves that as it deals very little damage. Avalug's Avalanche finishes off Talonflame, but Flame Body burns him up as a going away present. We call on Pikachu next, and thankfully Avalug's special defense stat isn't great. Thunderbolt takes him below half health, and when Pikachu survives an Avalanche, another Thunderbolt ends things for Wolfric. As my tripod continues to struggle with the only job it has, Ash adds the Iceberg badge to his case. That's 8 badges, so now we can make our way to the Pokemon League. Episode 6, Return of the Goo. We've only got 5 Pokemon on hand, so luckily as Ash makes it back to Lumio City, Gudra rolls up on the back of a pickup truck. It's such a goofy scene, and I love it. Now, with the return of the Goo, we've officially got a full team of 6, so let's pay a visit to the Elite Four. Malva, Seabold, and Wickstrom all appeared in the anime, but Drasna never showed up. It doesn't really matter though, because they never battled Ash, so for this video, their appearances mean nothing. We're just gonna battle them with the team that Ash assembled, because there's not much else to do. You can see the whole team here with their anime accurate movesets, although Noivern should know Dragon Claw by now. Past me will realize that mistake eventually though. There's not much else to say, we don't have a lot of crossover left with the anime, so let's get started with Malva. We get the battle started with Talonflame facing off against her, Pyroar. It takes a couple of tries, but Brave Bird cuts down the fire line to give us the first win of the Pokemon League. Malva calls on her Torkoal next, and a Stone Edge wipes out Talonflame's remaining HP to tie things up. We send in Greninja second, and although we aren't able to morph with him, his moveset is correct, so we're able to retake the advantage with a few blasts of Water Shuriken. Malva's Talonflame is out third, so we know what to expect here. Unfortunately, knowing what to expect and knowing how to deal with it are two different things. When Water Shuriken can't score the KO, Brave Bird eliminates Greninja, so Pikachu's up next. A full restore from Malva heals up Talonflame, but Pikachu is too determined for that to stop him. A critical hit on Thunderbolt one-shots Talonflame to leave the Fire Elite 4 member with only one. Chandelure is our final team member, and after a flamethrower takes care of Pikachu, we call on Gudra. Another full restore drags things out, but without any real issues, Gudra takes down Chandelure to earn us the win. Alright, let's keep things moving. 
Seabold is the second Elite Four member and it is the water type specialist we lead off with Pikachu. Starting with Clawitzer, Seabold calls for Water Pulse but Thunderbolt lands first. It's not enough for the knockout though so Water Pulse hits its mark too. This is anime Pikachu we're talking about though so obviously he survives on 1 HP. Thunderbolt finishes off Clawitzer and for some reason Seabold sends out Gyarados next. Pikachu's Thunderbolt falls just short of the KO and Gyarados breaks through paralysis to land an earthquake. Yeah, from 1 HP it did seem unlikely that Pikachu was going to live that. We call on Gudra second and even though Seabold uses a full restore, Dragon Pulse earns us the win. Seabold's third team member is Starmie and after taking a lot of damage from Gyarados, his Ice Fang, Dazzling Gleam easily dispatches Gudra. We call on Talonflame after the Dragon type falls and although Brave Bird hits hard, Surf washes away the Flying type. Greninja's next up and after a back and forth, Dazzling Gleam leaves him on 1 HP so we're really fluking our way through this one. Thanks to a full restore though, Starmie's able to earn a third knockout. This is not going well. We send in Noivern whose acrobatics finally give us the win over Starmie, leaving Seabold with only his Barbarical. Stone Edge obliterates Noivern, taking us into a one on one. Holucha comes in last and lands a high jump kick that one shots Barbarical to give us the win. Two down, two to go. Wickstrom's the third Elite Four member and as the Steel type specialist, we're getting things going with Talonflame. Repeated flame charges on Klefki cause Wickstrom to break out a couple of full restores. Eventually, thanks to a torment, Steel Wing scores Talonflame the knockout, but that took way too long. Probopass is up next, and after a flame charge, his power gem destroys Talonflame. Holucha comes in second and leaps into the air, landing a high jump kick which takes down Probopass. Up third for Wickstrom is Scizor, but Holucha's high jump kick is just too powerful. The kick knocks out Scizor, so now only Aegislash remains. We recall Holucha, who's largely useless against the ghost, and send out Pikachu. Although the electric type does well, Shadow Claw takes him down before he can finish things. Aegislash is weak and paralyzed though, so when Greninja comes in, he's got an easy job. Water Shuriken washes away the Pokemon Sword and Shield to hand us a pretty easy win over Wickstrom. Alright, Drasna is up next. We start things off with Noivern facing off against Dragalge. Dragon Pulse makes pretty quick work of Noivern though, so that's not an ideal start. We call on Gudra next, and even though Drasna uses the full restore, a Dragon Pulse from our side avenges Noivern. Altaria comes in second for the final Elite Four member and is immediately blown away by Ice Beam. Drasna's Noivern comes in third and also falls to Ice Beam in one. Drudigan's up last and Dragon Pulse makes it three one shots in succession. They clearly saved the worst for last, so if nothing else, that's kind of nice. The champion Diantha is the final trainer standing in our way, and like Malva, Seabold, and Wickstrom, she did appear in the anime but never battled Ash. I completely forgot to buy items on the way in, so I had to lose this battle on purpose so Noivern would have a chance to take part in the finale. Again, there is not a lot of relevance for this as far as the video goes, so let's get things going with Gudra taking on Diantha's Holucha. After an Ice Beam, the champion uses a full restore, but a second Ice Beam scores Gudra the one shot. Aurorus isn't a great matchup for Gudra, so we make the switch out to Greninja. Thunder isn't enough to take out the frog, so Water Shuriken hands us another win. Diantha calls on her own Gudra next, and after a Focus Blast decimates Greninja, we send in Noivern. Another full restore slows us down, but Noivern's Dragon Claw eventually takes out Gudra. Tyrantrum's out fourth for Diantha, and after Dragon Claw lands once more, Head Smash finishes off Noivern. We bring Gudra back into battle, and his Ice Beam quickly decimates Tyrantrum. Diantha's penultimate Pokemon is Gorgeist, and after yet another full restore, Ice Beam freezes her before finishing the job. That leaves Diantha with only one. Gardevoir comes in and Mega Evolves as we switch out to Pikachu. A Crit Moonblast one-shots our first ever Pokemon, so let's see how Holucha does. Not very well, apparently. Talonflame comes in and strikes the Mega Gardevoir with Steel Wings, scoring the knockout and earning us the title of champion. After our lengthy journey through Kalos, we've officially beaten Pokemon X using the exact team that Ash used for every major battle. Well, wherever possible, at least. I've always loved making this series, and this video was no different. I don't know how much the quality of the footage will bother people, but if you want to see me attempt Alola, then leave a comment. There's really not a lot to say other than that, I guess. So, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.